Okay, after great personal sacrifice, this ancient lathe is back up and running. I got the lead screw connected to the gearbox now, and I got all the gears working. I got a new motor for it, and I'm going to experiment with threading this piece to fit into this coupling. It's PVC for safety and my first major attempt at doing this. In case I crash something or break it, it won't be expensive or injurious. So I measured the part that I need to make to fit with this ancient threading gauge and I came up with 14 threads per inch on the end that side of that uh, coupling. So to turn 14 threads per inch Right there it is, B7, I'm sorry, B8. So if this was attached here, that's the one thing I haven't done yet. I already have B selected, but I need to move this to 8. That should give me 14 threads per inch or a ratio of 0 0.015 rotations of the lead screw for every single rotation of the chuck. Because I'm not really sure where to engage the threading dial, I'm just going to choose to use number one, and I'll always make subsequent passes engaging the half nut lever on the number one. I need to read and research and understand that, but keep in mind this machine was built before I was born, so it didn't really come with a manual, not to mention the fact it had been relegated to a horrible life of turning armatures in a starter and alternator rebuild shop. So it was packed with brass and garbage. But it's back up and running now. For this operation I have disengaged the bull gear. I've slowed the ratio of the speed down to a very reasonable number of RPMs on the headstock by engaging the back gear so it turns at a nice, slow, predictable speed. I'm going to bring this threading dial very close here and I'm just barely going to kiss the work. I've seen other people do this. I'm just not entirely sure that I know how. I'm going to lock down my cross slide so that it doesn't move around on me and then I'll feed into the work for subsequent passes using the compound slide. It cuts the threads at an angle. I've heard people say 29 and a half degrees. Well I'm using a threading Chinese threading tool and I'm going to use about 30 degrees just like they do. And I'll make all my subsequent engagements on number one on the threading dial. I'll make light passes. I've marked the work with some layout die so we should be able to see my passes. Okay, so we're running. I'm going to come in here and just kiss the work right about there. And I'm going to stop it and lock down my cross slide. Okay, now I got the cross slide locked. I'm just going to wait for this threading dial to come around to number one. When I engage the half nut, I'm going to cut just very so lightly. In fact, I'm going to advance this about ten thousandths of an inch. I'm just kissing the work right now, waiting for this half nut to come around to number one. I'm sure there's some sort of ratio and there's lots of engagement points. Like I said, I don't have a manual for the machine. I'm going to have to read how to do that. So here comes number one, engage now, and we're tracing across the work, hopefully at 14 threads per inch, just making a nice light cut. I'm going to come down here about an inch or so, that's all I need. I'm going to stop the hat lever, and I'm just going to let it trace over itself. Alright, I'm going to back my 
compound out one turn, run back to the beginning of the work, feed my compound back in that one turn, plus about another ten thousandths of an inch, maybe fifteen thousandths. Here comes the number one. Let's re-engage and see what happens. There's the second cut, and it looks like it's tracking directly in the existing threads where I was. That's a good thing. Just about cleaned up all of the layout die. Here's my stop. My stop. I'm at about 35 thousandths. I'm going to back out one and a half turns. Come back and try it again. Okay, I've fed back in another 15 thousandths. Here's number one. Here's my third pass. Not really sure how those chips winding around there are going to affect it. But I'm going to stop there. I'll clean those out before I uh, before I make another pass. Okay, we're back on. I'm going to go back to about where I was. Come in about another ten thousandths. When the number one comes along, I'm going to re-engage. Amazingly, it's tracking the same threads. I probably should have cut a little bit more on that pass. Number one, I've fed in about another twelve thousandths. And this should be the last pass. Yeah, maybe not, I may need one more. Well, I've already proven how much I don't know. I made the assumption of thinking that this piece of stock would fit in here if it was just threaded. So after I made the last pass, what happened was I didn't in disengage the half nut as soon as I should have. And all of a sudden I was cutting much deeper and it popped the piece of work out of there. Fortunately, like I said, it's PVC and not steel or aluminum because it was taking such a deep cut that it would have never worked. So I miked the inside minor diameter of these threads only to find out that this piece is about 180 thousandths over that. So I need to turn this down to the minor diameter and then thread it. So I'm going to do that and we'll try again. So here I am on attempt number two. I skipped the whole layout die thing and I'm using four as a start point. So that was pass number two, about 80 thousandths. So now I'm going to go to about 95 thousandths. Waiting for the four to come around. I think four passes, given that this is PVC, should be in depth enough to get the threads to engage. We'll see what happens. Okay, so this is attempt number three. The first time I measured the thread depth from the outside of the threads rather than the inside of the threads, or vice versa, and I cut the part too small. So. Here we are in pass number three. I'll skip some of this because you've seen it. OK, 
Okay, the number one's coming around for the final pass on the third attempt to do this. And I'm gonna make my last cut here. So let's see what happens. So there's the last pass. Here's the part I'm trying to fit. And check that out. A little sloppy. But that's thread cutting on the Sheldon. It works. So now that it's out of the chuck and it's cleaned up a little bit, it's not quite as sloppy as I thought that it was. I uh, actually can torque it down pretty good and there's there's no play in the in the part it fits in there pretty good I'm excited because now I can do all of the threading operations I haven't cut internal threads yet but I'm sure the process is pretty similar so now that I got all this cleaned up and thought about it a little bit I put some Teflon tape on uh, the threads that I cut just like I would if I was doing an install and the threads are actually quite good. I mean, very, very tight tolerances. I'm very pleased with what I'm able to do with this ancient piece of machinery. It uh, has really turned out to be an amazingly well-preserved piece of uh, American machine tool. I'll be cutting more threads and learning more about it. If you have any advice for me, please don't hesitate to comment. This is uh, it's been a fun rebuild project and I really enjoyed every aspect of it. Now that it's cleaned up, I'm actually pretty proud of it.